We are in beautiful San Diego, California. This is ACC 15, and we're talking about atrial fibrillation, which is actually quite common in uh, patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Coming in the April 14th issue of Jack, atrial fibrillation ablation in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, long-term outcomes and clinical predictors. And I'm with uh, Dr. Elad Anter, who is an MD, specialist in complex ablations at the Cardiovascular Institute, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, and an instructor and a uh, associate professor at assistant professor at Harvard, correct? Thank you. Uh, first, some back background. Why did you do this study that's coming out in Jack? So, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a significant comorbidity in patients with atrial fibrillation. Maintenance of sinus rhythm in this patient population is very challenging, and the efficacy of any intervention, including cardioversion or ablation, are unstudied, pretty much. Um, this patient population also have potentially increased risk for periprocedural complications, and hence um, studying this patient population for outcome following ablation is, uh, is, uh, is important. So you had about 40 patients with HCM, if I remember right? Right. We had 40 patients with primary hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, these patients were compared to a non-affected cohort of 64 patients with similar um, AF burden type and burden without hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. These patients um, underwent the same procedure which included only pulmonary vein isolation and ablation of organized rhythms without empiric lines. These patients were followed for a mean uh, or a median follow-up of 54 months and um, every three months at least a week of a continuous halter monitoring was obtained in addition to ECGs um, in um, clinic every three months. So they were pretty extensively followed up. So this is really the first study comparing long-term arrhythmia control among these patients with HCM and a non-affected control, correct? Correct. What did you find? So we found that patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy do worse than patients with, with non-hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy in several aspects. One, the procedure time is longer. Isolation of the pulmonary veins is typically more challenging. And that may have to do with more difficult anatomy or thicker atria. These patients also tend to develop um, periprocedural heart failure symptoms. And this is probably part of cardioversion, um, post-cardioversion syndrome. Uh, following restoration of sinus rhythm um, with a lot of fluid retention. They require longer hospital stay. Patients that were discharged, like we typically discharge patients, the following day came back to the hospital pretty often with heart failure symptoms. Um, so we learned that these patients need to be treated differently around the procedure. We also found that the long-term outcome of these patients is worse. Recurrence of atrial fibrillation with or without antiarrhythmic drugs is significantly higher. And actually, at the end of the follow-up, only 35% of the patient were maintained in sinus rhythm. So these are the bad, the bad outcomes. The good outcome, or at least the good message from this, is that patients that were able to be maintained in sinus rhythm symptomatically did significantly better than patients that were still in atrial fibrillation regardless of the rate control. And, and there are several reasons why that would happen. Um, I think the hypothesis that I have is that in these patients, maintenance of the atrial kick during sinus rhythm is important, especially given a very thick and stiff ventricle. And secondly, um, sinus rhythm reduces the risk, or at least the degree, of mitral regurgitation in patients um, with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and that may be another contributing factor. Now, you used a very standard approach for ablation in these patients. We're understanding more about the parasymptomatic aspects of ablation and arrhythmias. Do you think that there are other approaches that might be taken in HCM patients that might be more effective? You know, it's, it's hard to tell. There is a, there is a paper that came um, a bit earlier than our peripheral. It's not a comparative paper, but um, in the, it's, a, it's a prospective study in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy from Andrea Natali group. And they found that in addition to pulmonary vein isolation, ablation of other non-pulmonary vein triggers was associated with significant improvement in outcome.
We haven't done so. We, um, we treat a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy like we treat other patients. And, and we didn't find like um, these very good outcomes. It could be that more ablation needs to be done. I think we need to learn more about where to ablate. Ablation also causes harm. Um, so I think that we need to learn more. Probably pulmonary vein isolation by itself won't be enough, especially for patients with persistent atrial fibrillation. My take home message is the following. One is these patients are at high risk for, for complications per procedure. They need to be advised that they are in, at a higher risk. Physician taking care of these patients, electrophysiologist needs to be prepared to treat heart failure around the procedure. And patients need to be aware that probably they will require more than one procedure and the majority of them are going to remain on anti medications. And you also noted that when present, LV outflow obstruction is a strong predictor of recurrence. Right. So we looked on traditional and non-traditional predictors for um, atrial fibrillation recurrence. Um, and one predictor that come to uh, mind, one variable, is, is uh, outflow tract obstruction in these patients. And we found pretty much um, in all patients that had um, outflow tract obstruction that was significant, more than 30 millimeter of mercury, that these patients did poorly compared to patients that did not have hypertrophic, uh, did not have LV outflow obstruction. I just want to say that in these patients, if, if there are patients in this group, and I'm sure there are patients that are symptomatic with atrial fibrillation and have significant outflow tract obstruction, maybe surgery that combines, um, that combines my, you know, myomectomy, probably repair of a mitral valve and a maze procedure probably is going to be preferable for a standalone PVI. We always have to think about not treating the arrhythmia, but making the patient feel better. Um, this is uh, the April 14th issue of Jack 2015. Please look for Dr. Andrews' paper there. I am Rick McGuire, Executive Editor of CardioSource World News.